Mwashimua Felix Odiwar is the member of parliament for Langata constituency. He's joined us in the studio. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Uh, very well, thanks. <laughs> Uh, the last time we were here, I told you I'll be the member of parliament, and you doubted it. Eh? No, we didn't doubt. Uh, yes, you did, Eric. <laughs> you did. <laughs> you saw doubt. Here, so you yes, read... yes, you were in here. Ah, so I didn't doubt. You, were, you read doubt on my face. <laughs> yes. Ah, no, no, no. That wasn't doubt. And uh, All right. <laughs> <laughs> here I, you are. I'm good. How are you doing? Member of parliament. Very well. I'm fine, too. Karibu sana to Kenya's ah, biggest Asante, conversation. Asante. Asante. Yeah? yeah. What we normally do, and I was waiting for you to come, because we usually... Uh, welcome our guest with the day's proverb. Ordinarily, it would be sitting, give, giving the proverb, but it is away. You're seated where he would be seated. All right. So today's <laughs> proverb is from uh, Malawi. And the proverb goes, the most fragrant of flowers are eaten by the green fly. The most fragrant of flowers are eaten by the green fly. That's really deep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like what my grandmother would say. Mm. You cannot pickpocket a naked man. You <laughs> 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 can't actually. Can't actually. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. How's it been? Amazing. Uh -huh. uh, very challenging. Uh, really different from uh, what I thought mm. I, it would be because primarily you know the roles of the member of parliament. Mm. But uh, uh, it's much of a, a bigger call mm. Mm, than uh, just representation, mm. uh, legislation, mm. and oversight. It comes and boils down to personal issues about the constituents mm. that goes beyond uh, what, what you stand for. Yeah. It goes beyond. Uh, you uh, you went to parliament knowing that you're going to be representing your people in parliament. You're going uh, to be oversighting uh, the government. Yes. And participating in legislation. Yes. And now, little Dino, I'll be an undertaker. Uh -huh. You must be there uh -huh. in every single burial. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, missing one of them becomes an issue mm -hmm. because maybe competition went there, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and uh, it was a show that he stood with them or mm. she stood with them mm. and, you the are, most, and, and, the, most. and you're not there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you become uh, almost an ATM mm. when uh, like right now, parents are taking children to school. Yeah. The only money available for me is bursary to give out there, mm. uh, which is yet also to be disbursed mm. to the constituency accounts. Uh, but uh, if you see the queues, the lines, the requests from parents who want you to come through to take their children to school mm. and uh, they're actually in need mm. so you step up in your little way mm. that you can help yeah uh, so how are you doing that are you doing that out of, of pocket? course it's from personal pocket mm -hmm. yeah but you see it's not it's not something new to me mm. remember even when i was still in media yeah i had the Lango foundation and i was already doing a lot of a lot of charity, mm. philanthropy, and all that. Mm. So it didn't come as a surprise. Mm. But I can imagine of new legislatures who went in and were not doing that in their former lives. And you they have could to start easily, this. You could easily be bankrupt. Mm. You could bankrupt you, yourself. You will. You, you know, know, when you were seated here during the campaigns and you yeah. said, you know, when we asked you, so you understand the role of a member of parliament and you also understand the needs of your constituents. Yes. You said one of the things that you're very good at is forming partnerships. Yes. And you're going to solve all these issues but with collaboration and partnerships. Yes. 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 So what partnerships do you have now for of course, bursaries? Yes. I've had so many for issues. Hospital bills. For I've, I've had so many issues come out. Mm. Uh, like immediately I was elected with like four fire incidences mm. that uh, raved down several houses down there in Langata. Mm -hmm. Southlands with fire. Raila village there was fire. There's fire in Hira's ward. And definitely when there's fire, uh, we, we're talking about livelihoods yep. being taken away from these people. Mm. So I called a few partners, definitely. I will not mention because it will be free marketing. Mm. I still love radio and I know what it takes. And uh, they came through for me. These are people who I am, their brand ambassadors. Mm. Uh, a steel factory came through for me. We built houses for them. Mm. Uh, when we had uh, this 
we had um, we've had a lot of issues. We've we've had a, one of the biggest medical camps, mm. and we've had a good partnership with a few people who also are. I was their brand ambassador mm. in my previous career, mm. and they still came through. Uh, Christmas just was the other day. We fed thousands and thousands something that I could not do myself mm. because it will cost so much. Mm. I had partners coming up and I've tried to use my past career mm. to elevate me mm. and partner with them to change people's lives. It has been notable and I don't and will come in and ask you a question, but I just want to throw this one there because I saw, for example, when you're talking about the partnership with the free medical camp yeah. and some of the questions and comments that are coming up were, are these people mm. influencing you by saying they're supporting your cause? So when they come up with matters that require legislation mm. and all, or matters that then require oversight and you have to sit and question them, mm. you'd already be compromised. Of course, yes, everybody would say that. But uh, there's are people I've worked with in a very long time. Mm. And most of them don't even come from Langata. They just know the integrity that I did put out there during my time uh, in my past career. Mm. And they still come through. For example, let me ask you. Mm. I work closely with uh, a credit company. Mm. This credit company, uh, the owners are not even here. Mm. Uh, you get, mm -hmm. and from the partnership and the work we did in the past, mm. they actually asked me, what can we do mm. to support you? And they came through. See, one day maybe a case will be brought uh, on the floor. Well, a violation, of some, them. violation of maybe some <laughs> financial, <laughs> some financial legislations yeah. and all you mm. understand uh i would still stand up and oversight them i will not be compromised mm. yes because mm. laws are laws mm. yes yeah. Do you find, I mean, it's, it's often easy for us to look at a member of parliament, doesn't really matter where, and say, <clears throat> all these things you're engaged in, providing school fees here, attending burials, maybe we say, okay, it's not directly in your JD. On the other side of it, we're saying, look, representation, legislation, oversight. Mm. That is a thing upon which a member of parliament will be judged. Mm. But as you step into it now, do you see that there would then be a, a, a mix of the two that it should be accepted that a member of parliament is going to have to go to that be burial is going to have to represent at that school fees while at the same time being on the floor of the house and doing those three things is it time to accept that those things have to run concurrently uh you see i could easily tell you that uh uh the other part of touching people's life and their need mm. becomes even bigger than your main role mm. or your daily engagement with your constituents mm. becomes even bigger than the main role that you signed uh, you signed for it is even bigger than your jd mm. let me tell you in, in our parliament the house are more than 300 300 of us mm. let's say a motion is brought on the floor how many of us will even get a chance to debate on it mm. you see the senate is much more easier that's why you see a senate uh, a senator comes out vibrant each and every single time mm. because there are only 47 of them and uh, when a, a motion or a debate comes to the floor it is easier to see who is participating and who is not for the speaker to even see you number one in that floor mm. okay mm. it's so hard over 350 of us mm. Understand? So maybe you even had a contrary opinion about an issue. Mm. Uh, you might not even get a chance to to be, to debate on it. Mm -hmm. We even have s times where you have to now just cross the floor, go all the way to the speaker, mm -hmm. tell them that you know, sir, kindly, I've already plugged it, mm. and on the queue. You know, we are on queue. Right? Yes. That if you want to speak, you sometimes even come so early than even. Very early to just and plug and in your plug card plug in. because it's electronic mm. and the queues and fast come fast, fast come fast up. Mm -hmm. So let's say, let's say you're number twenty, mm. <laughs> <laughs> just number twenty. Forget about number one hundred. <laughs> By the time you get a chance to speak, but then when I leave mm. that house, mm. I already find some of my constituents right outside there, outside the parliament, mm. with an issue that needs they would not even care whether i spoke in parliament or i didn't mm. but they are here with an issue that they need 
you see mm. so i think they must so how do you balance those two because yes there is addressing today's issue that this person has mm. this person has an issue today they need to take their child to school but also you understand that if nothing else changes this person will still be needing uh, school fees assistance next time how do you balance that between that and the role that you have in parliament of ensuring for example that there is adequate money that goes to the education sector so that this person never has <coughs> to worry about school fees so you see uh parliament which what everybody knows is the plenary mm. but uh, parliament at work is a parliament in the committees the different committees now is just making sure that the work that is done in the committees is is um, at that point now participate fully in the committees let's say it's uh, education the education committee yeah if you are not a member maybe you can send a member there with an issue and they will be bold about it yeah. so we try so much to make sure that we work more in the committees than in the plenaries mm. what everybody says mm. yes then there's the politics of the day i mean there is so you've been elected people have sent you to parliament they yes. expect you to represent them to legislate to oversight the national government and to come and sort out their issues yes there's a politics of the day you're in the minority yes your leadership in the minority is pushing another agenda right now which is saying look we believe that our leader won this election and we do not then recognize the legitimacy of these people who are in power yes and we're going to push for these people who are in power now mm. to vacate office because they're not there legitimately yes where does that leave you uh it leads me to stand with the party mm -hmm. and the party leader and the party conversation at any given time mm. my support for my party leader my party has never been questioned in any given day and Except i really know until yesterday i really know why you called me here mm. <laughs> and why you you're buzzing me throughout mm. definitely because of what happened yesterday mm. remember one of the first projects of of uh, of our president uh, was actually in langata mm. when we launched affordable homes, homes. Yeah. homes. which 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 the start date is actually today mm -hmm. and that was the reason why i was called to state house yesterday mm -hmm. everything that we discussed yesterday was uh nothing political we discussed everybody everything everything de uh, development oriented and mm -hmm. that was it who called the meeting <coughs> the president called the meeting president who, called the meeting who's the president uh, really <laughs> who's yes. the president latif i don't know raila odinga has said that the azimio no, who is the president the azimio leadership no, does not recognize and you just said you support the position of your leader who is the president the leader of your party has said we do not recognize mr william ruto as a <laughs> legitimate president in this country and we also do not recognize any people that he has appointed yes. to office in this country yes and you don't recognize anything that he's doing in this country you see when um, so who called you when when, when this project house? when this project was happening mm. the first time i called my party leader and told him that uh, uh mr william ruto then now is coming to my constituency to launch this project yeah do i go told me if it's anything development go ahead mm. and be part of it okay all right and uh, baba himself has given all of us a key to work with the president mm. matters development okay you saw him visit homa bay the other day sian kisumu yes he was welcomed with all these mps all these governors and they even had <coughs> meetings at state house now that tells you one thing that uh, the key baba lieutenants definitely have seen mm. around uh, uh president william ruto and i insist president and i'll tell you why mm. uh and uh, they would always question our loyalty because we in the forefront mm. uh every single rally every single uh space where baba's been you've always seen me mm. okay and uh, yesterday definitely the interview that broke off yeah. uh, you know i thought that i would only be trending when i was in media mm. uh, this one is even uh, bigger i was trending at number one mm. yet we are more than nine mps there mm. so this other nine mps i was lucky to be part of the meeting throughout as much as our 
uh, I'm from Nairobi. Mm. They told me to sit in to also listen because I come from the regions where they represent. Mm. And being a leader, it was only noble that I sit there. And they followed up on every single project that uh, Ruto had promised mm. when he was in Nyanza. In 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 okay. okay. And uh, the reason for this meeting was actually a follow up mm -hmm. on this. Maybe it came at uh, a time when everybody uh, is questioning and we are up out there every weekend mm. pushing baba's agenda then kaboom you are at state house i must ask you mm. you've said something that when this housing project was being launched by his excellency yes, yes. president yes you called yes rilo dingan yes should I because go? we had just come from elections so, and this was one of the first project i understand yes what if he had said no i would not have gone there what if yesterday yes the president had called you to state house yes and what if you had called him again yes and he said well we're being called for follow-up meeting yes now uh. with temperatures going to where they have gone yes. over the last two weeks yes and he had said no yes would you not have gone of course yes now i didn't have a reason to call or ask because mm. definitely i'd already given us a key to work if it's it's uh, hey, wait a minute uh, yeah, yes. Jalango, let's go chronologically no, listen <coughs> listen so uh -huh. there, are two, there are two instances Lati, yes. chronologically you asked me listen yes. there are two instances listen. here the first Baba's in the first instance his excellency the president is launching a project in langata yes and he obviously it is your constituency yes you've called Raila Odinga and yes. you said should i go mm. he says anything to do with development yes you must go go yes right yes you've also given us the example yeah. of his excellency the president's going to homer bay mm. the first time maybe the reception was not so good yes mm. second time yes. he went and everybody was there all because e because we had because already been told essentially mm. baba said, said you know you what should go. Mm. this go. is for development go Let's right go. all right now mm. since then mm. things have become salty significantly since then things have been illegitimate government this that the other mm. thing mm. Had he told you then, in light of this, that we do not recognize one, two, three, would you, Jalango, have not gone if Rilo Dinga said, no, we don't recognize this guy, do not go? Mm, I would still have gone. Since being development, mm. I would still ask what the agenda. Mm. Okay. And if it still stands as development, mm. I would still go because the people of Langata, do not care who's president or who's not. Mm. Mm -hmm. What they care for is, is the delivery of of what the mandate they gave me. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. It is the people of Langata who will judge me at the end of this all. Jalango, we gave you a chance. Mm -hmm. Did you deliver mm -hmm. our mandate? We had asked you. These were our issues. Mm -hmm. Have you delivered and onto these issues mm -hmm. it is the people of langata who will at the end of the day yes mm -hmm. politics mm -hmm. notwithstanding notwithstanding yes okay I, then i'm going to go back to that issue that you mentioned that you're always in line with your party leader yes right so right now mm -hmm. right now in mm -hmm. this instance mm -hmm. all right today mm -hmm. what trumps the other mm -hmm. let me tell you something mm -hmm. uh we have a rally in machakos mm -hmm. This Friday, uh, Friday or Saturday, the date is still not yet clear. Mm. I will be there because now that's politics. We have to learn how to differentiate politics and development as much as they run in the same direction. Mm. What if the president holds the key to this development and for whatever political reason says, okay, guys, don't go there. Uh, I'm waiting for one statement from Baba again mm. that will also give me direction. That says you don't. That whether it is development or not, mm. don't go. Then we'll have that conversation. But this is Baba has said it clearly. We cannot and will not recognize the Kenya Kwanzaa regime, and we consider the Kenya Kwanzaa government illegitimate. <coughs> that basically says, I do not recognize that William Ruto man as president of the Republic of Kenya. And I do not recognize that he is a head of government. So anything that he's doing, calling it development, calling it whatever, unless he's doing it in his private capacity, uh -huh. that's okay. But if he's doing it as president, I don't recognize. So I think, and not I, I think we, we includes you. I think, Yolango. I think then Baba gave us a chance to work with him in his private capacity <laughs> in case of development. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> eh, let's take a break on that note. <laughs> Eric Latif, how you doing? Uh, <laughs> this is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. Conversation continues with the Honorable Member of Parliament for Langata Constituency, Felix Oduor Jalango. We are talking about development and why some leaders went to meet with the President yesterday. You've already told us, so you were invited by the President yes, and yes. you are going to discuss um, the housing project. And in that meeting, you also found that the President had coincidentally invited leaders from Nyanza region as a follow-up to the visit that he had made to the region yes, and they yes. were discussing the promises that he made and how yes. he was going to deliver on them yes did he ask you anything about what the, you've been doing in the rallies no he didn't ask me uh, actually he veered off that direction Kapsa, mm. Mm. because he he really wants our big support mm. in his development agenda so yesterday no today the contractors will be on the ground. Then the Langata Tivet at Madaraka uh, has also been had been stalled mm. because some variation on the BQ. So he allocated another 50 million. And how that is going to work well is that uh, when the Tivet is done and the construction is going on, mm. then we have very short term courses, like three months where these young men can go to the Tivet, learn some craft, tiling, plumbing, and they are the, the, the young men and women in Langata, mm. and they will be directed straight to work on site mm. because the housing project is a three-year project. Mm. And uh, at any given level, we'll need experts. Mm. So tiling, people will be doing painting and all this. We'll learn it at the Tivet, mm. then come straight to work at the at the construction site. Mm. So that's why we really needed both of the projects to run concurrently. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think it's a I think it's a brilliant thing. Yes. And just in terms of partnerships what <coughs> can actually work. Um it's unfortunate that the political overriding now puts a cloud over all of this and mm. that you can't really tell what is really happening mm. um with uh, developments in, in this area. I, I, We've got to ask the question, though. It still goes back. I mean, we've been told also now there are cracks in Azimio just because <laughs> the 10 of you, 10 of you, 9 of you uh, went to State House yesterday without actually looking at, you know, the underbelly of the story in terms of what was really, really happening. Does it matter? Does it really matter? Let me tell you, we are at a very tough political end now. Mm. We are at a crossroad, we can't deny the government is going on with its projects and the opposition now, that is us at now, uh, are calling out to resist. Mm. You understand? Yeah. Now, the government will always play very smart. For example, the day of the launch of the houses, when uh, the president came to Langata the first time, with him was now the CS Lands, yep. mm -hmm. former MP. MP. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's say that day I didn't show up. Mm. Would have been given a chance to speak on behalf of the people of Langata. Mm. Yeah, former MP. Former MP. Former MP. Yeah. Mm. And what would they? What would they say? We, you gave somebody a chance to represent you, mm. and he's not here. Mm. You denied this guy a chance, mm. but here he is coming to see development. Mm. Now let me tell you something. Mm. The people right now just want development. Mm. Okay? All this will go on. Mm. Issues are out here. The cost of living mm. is very high. People are going through a very hard time. Yeah. Mm. And uh, they're just looking for anywhere to lean on. To bring hope, to make sure, to show that we are on the right track. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay? So I can't lie to you. Mm. We are in a crossroad. Do I and think, yeah. Mm. <clears throat> to cut the crossroad down, Baba accepted mm. and said, whenever we are talking about developmental issues or things to do with us, kindly go ahead and work for our people. Okay. Because apart from that, that's why we were elected. Sure. The first thing, the first reason why we elected was to work for the people. We've already been given the mandate. So your job doesn't stop because... You are in opposition. Mm. You still have to work for the people. Mm -hmm. mm. You get? Yes. Langata has issues. I've not even been able to solve the water problem yet. Mm. 
you understand mm. they call me every single day on my phone like today is wednesday right mm -hmm. today what is supposed to come to langata mm. i might even be awakened to the night just confirming with the people left and right that now will be water is pumping uh, is, water is langata. the water there mm. you understand yeah how does that even come to my political end sure mm. so then the thing is yes when i ask the question does it matter you may be the first one in this manner over the last few weeks to actually say you know what all this political hoo-ha aside what really matters what really matters mm. is to be able to deliver a proper environment through which people's livelihoods can thrive so the politics really does and, it and matter I'll, and i'll call you today with your name Ndu. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and i love it yeah. Ndu, let me tell you one thing there's no single day welcome to kenya i know you've been here for long mm. there's no single day there'll never be politics in this country they run concurrently development and politics so it's just for you to know which direction at what time are you where and how if today i was in a rally somewhere mm. with baba for example mm. And there's no water in Langata. The people of Langata will not care what I said in that rally. Mm -hmm. They would care about the water in Langata. 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 You get? Mm. If today there was water in Langata and I didn't show up at Baba's rally, my ardent Langata supporters, mm. ODM supporters, would not care. That you were not in the rally. That, 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 that there was water, but I was not oh. in that <laughs> rally. Right. You understand? Mm. So, at any given point, uh, we are on a race. Mm. That is the road down, electricity up. Mm. So, mm. let's move. Let's move. Yes. Do you think that the politicians then confuse the citizens? Because, for example, so you went to state house yesterday you had a conversation about a project that's taking place in your constituency all right mm -hmm. and then on sunday you are in machakos and you will be there speaking and you know championing the same message mm -hmm. we are resisting this administration we mm -hmm. are going to do everything we can to mm -hmm. make sure that it's ungovernable and this mm -hmm. administration can gets out of office mm -hmm. we don't recognize anything mm -hmm. in fact now you'll be wearing that uniform with a beret and you'll be telling all, all those things <coughs> and saying Ruto must go. Mm. But you just met Ruto. And you didn't tell him to his face that he must go. And now you're you coming see, to tell us in Machakos, Ruto must go. You see, uh, soon and very soon, mm. Mm. the electorate will be smart enough or they're already smart enough mm. and they already know there's politics and there's development. Mm. Yes. Just that. Simple. There's politics. So we this. take the politics as entertainment. It's like... It's not entertainment. Politics can never be entertainment. So what politics shapes how can we, how even, can we even as we speak two? right now. Even as we speak right now, mm. politics will always shape every single way we live out here. You understand? What impact is it likely to have for you to have a rally wearing the uniform under beret and saying Ruto must go and saying let's start resisting and maybe even come up with a list of the things that you want us to resist? Mm -hmm and say you know unless uh, ruto is uh, out of office we are not going to do this 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 and the other mm. and then on monday you have to address the needs of your constituents mm. by dealing with the root administration you see at that time contract you're saying paid. politics work will not stop on mm. ground you understand work is not going to stop contract has been paid contract awarded nyumba zinaendelea maji nakuja barabara inatengenezwa stima iko watoto wanaenda shule mm. you understand so these things have to run eric why are you confusing do here <laughs> you've been here for the longest time we've been in this journey not once or twice mm. we've been here you understand i'm just new in politics mm. it is not everybody's cup of tea it is not everybody's cup of tea that's why some people come in one time and that's it for them mm. and don't want to go back to me i find that this is what actually i was meant for mm. you understand to work for the people, champion what they want, mm. bring development, ask questions, stand there, resist, make sure that what you want is done. Mm. That's it. Mm. And that is where now I am. I'm in my kind of waters now. Mm. You know me when we were here. Mm. How many radio stations did I leave mm. uh, here before, before I settled in? Anna? If you're not giving me what I want, mm. 
I leave. You move to the I next move. one. Mm. I move. We move. Life is a movement. Mm. <laughs> Life is a movement. Join the movement. Yeah. So forget about all those things. Oh, just, forget about all just, that. Just move on. Just move on. I mean, the rest of the things are just it's, drama. And it's too short to, okay. to, to make you really, really think that, you know what. Mm. Mm. As a Take member of parliament in the, in the minority in yes. the National Assembly, um, of course, you must have your own, you know, parliamentary, the minorities meeting and have taking direction from your leader, Pio Wandai, mm. on how we are going to advocate our issues mm. to make sure that uh, there's accountability from this government. Mm. There is, of course, the cost of living. Mm. All those things that you talk about even in the rallies. Mm. There's a cost of living, the cost of wunga, there's subsidized fertilizer, mm. this and the other. Mm. What are you doing to make sure that these things are delivered? Now playing your oversight <coughs> role in Parliament. Of course, we must agree that Parliament has not had sittings, enough sittings mm. to... to to push some of these things all right mm. because how how long have we been in we've been in parliament now six months mm. in these six months there was a lot going on mm. putting up the committees together the swearing in mm. it was just settling into that house there's a lot to settle in a government for a government to start moving mm. so the first i think six four months if you were watching there was very little work that was done in that we yep. hope that when Parliament now resumes, now we shall start tabling some of these issues mm. and strongly debate on them and come up with directions that mm. we are taking. Mm. Yes, but saying that this Parliament already has worked enough, we just had a clerk the there other are day. Big things that have in, happened. Though. Inductions, inductions, inductions. Mm. We just finished the committee's inductions the other day yep. in Mombasa. Mm. Yeah. There's a lot that has been happening. In that time, mm. a lot has happened also in Parliament. For example, <coughs> the IBC Amendment Act mm -hmm. went through Parliament, went into the Senate, has been uh, assented mm -hmm. to by the President. Mm -hmm. Your party is opposed to it. Mm -hmm. For example, the uh, inclusive, uh, the Financial Inclusion Fund. Yes. Yeah. The regulations came to Parliament. They uh, were passed by Parliament. The there's a lot fund that has happened. Is out Eric, there. We, ha we have to agree. The supplementary there's budget enough, came to there's Parliament. A lot, there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot that's happened. And there's a lot that heavy. has happened. Yeah. There's a lot that has happened, but definitely not what we can sit here and say that we've sat down and uh, and if you so you've not, not had a, like a position on them like you've not had a position for example i on would the matter easily of, tell you mm. i would easily tell you that every single thing that we've done or championed out here as a minority has been in our rallies and all mm. but in parliament very little has come in to be debated on the issues that you mentioned mm. because most of the issues that have been have been uh, tabled uh, so far I've just to make the government start running to move to okay. move mm. so there will be an opportunity there for, will be an opportunity taking into consideration there when you clock in at 20 and yeah. you know the, there's the, 300 we are coming back we are coming back in a week or two yeah we will have a chance now to start now debating the real issues mm -hmm. food food prices have to come down uh, subsidies have to come in if that that is the only people are going through a very hard time bro yeah. those are you don't have you Jalango. don't have to have a Maybe I'm from those that, are contained sure. in yes. a supplementary budget. Of course, okay? yes. Yeah. The supplementary budget has been brought to Parliament. Mm. Now, what kind of voice have we heard from the minority on the issue of the supplementary budget on the content of the of supplementary course, yes. budget uh, that talk about we are having a PG. The subsidies? We have these are the sub fertilizer subsidies. We having the party. This is the one that's allocating twelve billion yes, yes. shillings to the what's it called? Not the Huduma Fund. What's it called? The Hustler Fund. Hustler, Hustler Fund. Fund. Now we are going for our PG mm. this Thursday. This Thursday tomorrow, we are starting our PG. And definitely, we will have a voice from that on our take on all this. Mm. Yes. Does Mio PG is from tomorrow. It's, it's from tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. Mm. Yes. During campaigns, I guess it's the time where promises, you know, flying everywhere. Mm. There's certain things you said. There's certain things, you know, you said you would you, you would do. Or at yeah. least, at the very least, said that you would like to do. Yes. So people are waiting, mm. you know, mm. to say, okay. He said he was going to do this. He said he was going to do this. Or at least agitate for this mm, to be mm, done. Mm. Would you say you're on course? We are on course. One of the first things I ever said was uh, uh, definitely making sure that the issues of bursaries, for example, mm. is transparent. Okay? Mm. Open, free, and fair. That's why when I was issuing the bursary forms, I did have the different wards coming to my office in different days. 
then we did all that openly everybody who came got a chance to have a form mm -hmm. we are clearing all that to make sure that the legit people because we are double entries uh, double mm -hmm. applications you just know kenyans at the end of the day mm -hmm. and it will just be that again and uh, I even added more funds in it and decided the 100% that is given for education, this time let it go for bursaries. That is around 50 million Kenya shillings. Mm. It will all go that. It's mm. a promise I did put mm. out there. I did say that this is going to, my, during my time, Langata's water issue will be a thing of the past. Now we've been pushing through mm. the Nairobi water and definitely the county to make sure that the Northern Water Corridor Collector is complete, uh, probably by february in end of february end of this month and you saw sakaja's commitment into that and when that is done and we have the new infrastructure that now supplies langata mm. that will be a big win for me mm. you understand mm. we said we'll have a food program for those people who are um you know langata we have so many slums yeah and uh, that is already happening we already ha having that happening even before i build the kitchen mm. that i promised that i will build mm -hmm. for food for education now food for so this is for school children this is for school children what mm -hmm. this will do i'm putting up a community kitchen in partnership with food for education that will see uh 10, 000, almost every single child in langata mm -hmm. every day have food served in school mm -hmm. now what that will do proper concentration mm -hmm. in class mm -hmm. retention and even more enrollment mm. because we have children from the slums who don't show up to school yeah. to go look for food. Mm -hmm. And if they you said are about sure, ten thousand, more than ten thousand, more than ten thousand yes. school-going children, yes, in Langata. And this is in public and private schools. Public and private, provided you, and both is secondary and primary. Mm. Uh, it's a model that I have borrowed from uh, KJ mm. Mbakasi South. Is it's Not Mbakasi eh? Dagoriti. 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 Yeah. Dagoriti South, yeah. and it's working very well. And uh, it's one of the key projects I'm, I've put out there. How do you fund this? How how does one get such a thing? Moving? Now this 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 works uh, uh, in the most beautiful way. I think it's one of the things that is so beautiful. Mm. I didn't know. It's a very beautiful project. Mm -hmm. Now you put up this kitchen, okay? Mm. This kitchen uh, that we have subsidies from the county government. Okay. So a meal costs thirty shillings. Mm -hmm. All right. The county government is subsidizing for up to 24, 26 shillings. Mm -hmm. So the parents pay five shillings only. Mm -hmm. In any given day, the parents maybe pay 100 shillings per child. Mm -hmm. So this will save them 95 bob. Mm -hmm. So how do the parents put out, um, uh, pay for this? Mm -hmm. So there's a gadget that they load money on. Mm -hmm. It's like a watch. So when he, your child comes, all they have to do is to tap mm -hmm. and it is five shillings it is deducted, is deducted mm -hmm. and they have their food. Their yeah. meal. Can you imagine the burden you take away from the children, from the parents, mm -hmm. when all from a hundred shillings, now they only have to pay five shillings. Mm -hmm. So this project, probably by April, mm -hmm. it will be up and running in Langat. So Sakaja's input is yes. 24, 27 <coughs> bob per plate. 26 shillings per 26 plate. 26 bob per plate. Yes. And this is coming from the county government. County government and right. also the mm -hmm. government. And the national government. The national government. Okay. Is the CDF contributing anything into this project? No, uh, what we are contributing mm. is the building of the kitchen. Okay. I've put out, uh, the kitchen costs 23 million shillings, mm. uh, but I've already put out 17 million shillings into this. In this financial year, 2022-2023, mm. 2023-2024. Mm. So I want to fund it. I want to put 17 million in the first disbursement of CDF. Yeah. Uh, the first thing will be bursaries. Then the next thing will be the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, how many children do you think ought to benefit? Right now, you're starting with about 10,000 or so children. We've put out 10,000. Mm -hmm. And uh, the school, we, we had a meeting with all the head of schools, uh, head teachers of Langata primary schools and secondary schools right. the other day at my office. And we're still working on the 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 estimates the numbers on of the children that will be there mm. now that we are even having there's a new year yeah so that children that have transferred to other schools and yeah. all so we are yet to get now the new numbers cumulatively okay yes but yeah. we are planning for that for that kitchen to mm. feed at least ten thousand people mm. there's just about 45 seconds yes and i just want to to address 
A report released yesterday by education stakeholders says 4% of schools in middle and low income urban settlements are public schools. Mm -hmm. That means about 96% of schools in your constituency, for example, in the slum areas, mm -hmm. are private. Mm -hmm. Are you planning to set aside money from CDF and <coughs> championing the national government to build public schools in your constituency? The problem we have in Langata is land, eh? mm -hmm. land uh, in the different wards. Mm. You see like a place like High Rise, mm. High, High Rise Ward, Joshua Loom is the only public school. But with the new uh, we've, affordable, housing. Uh, affordable houses, we've had to put up a school in there. Mm. At least now we have, that is the first school we are doing. Mm. Then I'm completing, if you, if you follow me on my socials, mm. uh, I, I was at Kongoni mm. and we we're pushing for the completion of the project, mm. Kongoni Primary School and Secondary School. We are expanding. A lot of what we want to do is not to build new, mm. it's to expand on what we have. On existing infrastructure. On a, a, the existing infrastructure. All the best, man. Yes. All the best. It's encouraging to see that uh, you are already on the ground and working and looking at how to address the needs of your people. Yes, uh, that is why they elected us. Thank and uh, it's always a pleasure to be here. Mm. Thank you guys so much. Do that. Nice meeting you. Same here. Even Same beautiful here. in uh, person more than in <laughs> photos. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> Felix Oduor Jalango is a member of parliament for Langata constituency. He's been our guest. He'll be again. He'll be here again soon.